Hey, it's Alan Simpson. Welcome. A fairly common question I get in some of my beginning web development courses is, isn't there some way I can collect people's name and email addresses without getting into a whole database or a whole package like MailChimp or AWeber? I don't want to spend any money, and I don't really need something huge. Just a simple spreadsheet will work fine. If that's what you need, then Google Forms is probably going to be your best bet because it's free, it's easy, and the collected data goes into a spreadsheet. You'll need to have an account on Google, and if you don't have one, it's free. You can just sign up for one there. But let's say you already have an account. The first step is going to be to create your form. So you want to browse out to forms.google.com, and then if, you, if you're not signed into your account, you'll either have to sign in or create an account. While I'm thinking of it, I think I'll also put a quick bookmark to this for easy return. And in Chrome, you can drag the little lock down to your bookmark bar and then rename it if you like. Okay. Next, you can start with a blank form by clicking that big plus sign, though you might as well use one of the templates they've provided as a starting point and make it easier. Just click more near the top right to see what's available. And as you can see, there's lots of forms for lots of occasions, order form, event registration, uh, t-shirt sign-up, party invite, RSVP, job application, whatever you need. For our example, we're going to stick with contact information, so go ahead and click that one to get started here. Now, the first thing you might want to do is personalize it a bit. For example, instead of just showing contact information here, you could put something more inviting like join our mailing list. And then you can put some text here for the form description, too. Uh, whatever the reason for joining is, I'll just put in a few words as an example. Now, for name, you'd be smart to only ask for first name. Uh, the less you ask for, the more likely people are going to be to fill these out. And then down a little lower in that section, you can turn the make sure required is on. And that means they can't leave a blank. All right, then we'll move down to the next item, which is email. Now you can leave it there, or there's another way you can collect email where they get a response. And we'll go with that method. So go ahead and click this little trash can under email, and I'll show you how we re-add that later. Now I wouldn't recommend asking for address, so again, click and click the trash can. Phone number, click and click the trash can. I mean, if your form requires these, that's fine. But for my working example, we're just going to get first name and email address. Next, we'll personalize it to your own tastes. And to do that, you just click this palette icon near the top here. All right, and then you can choose a color from the menu that drops down, and that'll become kind of the theme color for the whole thing. Or if you want to get fancier, you can click the palette again, click this picture icon in the lower right, and choose a picture background for your header. Okay, and there's a bunch to choose from. And if you look down the left side, there's a bunch of themes like illustrations, birthday, food and dining. You can just click any theme name and then look at what's available over there. You can also upload your own photos if you like. But let's just say we're going to go with something relatively easy. I'll pick the jelly beans here. I guess because I'm kind of hungry right now and those look good. All right, so click that and click select. And now those become kind of the theme of the form. All right, and then to get a better sense of how it will look to the rest of the world, you can click this preview icon here. And that'll get rid of all your editing stuff, and you'll see it as the rest of the world will see it. Now, I know we don't have email address on there yet, but we'll add that soon enough. You can click this Edit Pencil to go back to editing, and we'll work on it some more now. Next, we'll look at Settings, indicated by this little gear icon, and that has options for controlling how the form behaves mostly. This first option, if selected, Collect Email Addresses, puts the email request back on the form but you get the added option of being able to send response receipts to people. So you can say, whenever somebody fills out this form, I just want to send a response letting them know we got it. Now, limit to one response requires people sign into Google, so your best bet is to not select that. And then down here, what people do after they submit. I usually let them edit after submit in case they made a mistake. Now, this C summary charts and text responses might make sense if you're doing a poll or you want the respondent to see what other people put in. But as a general rule, if you're collecting email addresses or something, you, do, you don't want to select that. 
Then click Save after making your selections, and you'll be back to your form. And now you can see the email address is back on the form. And the little red asterisk indicates that it's required, so they can't leave that blank either. And again, we can click Preview to see it as the rest of the world sees it. So this is what your respondents will see when they come to the form. And then go back to Edit here, and we'll do a little more work on this form. The next step is pretty critical, and that is responses. What are we going to do with the responses? In other words, what are we going to do with the data that people type in here? And the first step to defining that is to click Responses. Now, in a brand new form like this, you're going to see zero responses for starters because nobody's had a chance to fill out the form yet, so you don't have any responses. An important thing is make sure this accepting responses is to the right. Because if that's not to the right, that means the form isn't doing anything. It's not accepting input from people. And now the next thing we have to tell it is what to do with these names and email addresses that people are typing in. And most likely, you're going to want to put them in a spreadsheet. So you're going to want to click this little spreadsheet icon. And when you point to it, you'll notice it says Create Spreadsheet. And that's what you want to do. And you only want to do this once. You only need one spreadsheet because that one spreadsheet will collect all the data, no matter how long the form is out there, months, years. Okay, so you have all the input in one place. I'll show you how to get to that data shortly, but for now, go ahead and click Create to create a new spreadsheet. And you'll see it contains three columns. First column is the date and time that the respondent entered the form data. Username, which is kind of an odd name, is actually their email address. And first name is exactly that, that person's first name as they typed it onto the form. You can also rename the spreadsheet if you want. I usually name it the same as the form because if you get a bunch of these going on, it's a little easier to keep track of, of which is which if the spreadsheet name matches the form name. And then when you're done with that, you can just close the spreadsheet by clicking the little X button on its tab. Now if you use Google Mail, Gmail, um, you can click the three dots there on the Responses tab and tell it to send you an email notification every time someone completes the form, and that way you don't have to keep going back and looking. You'll, you'll know from your email when somebody's filled out the form. And finally, you want to click Send here, and that's where you either get the URL, the address for sending people to the form, or you can email it to them. In this example, I'm assuming you've got a website or something you just want to link. So after you click Send, you'll click this Link symbol here. And then you can click this Shorten URL, and you'll get this short URL, and then you can press Control-C in Windows or Command-C on a Mac, and then you're probably not going to memorize that, so you may want to paste it somewhere where you can get to it later. I'll just use this little notepad thing and write down that it's the link. Now, the other choice is you can embed it, and that's what these angle brackets mean, and you can set the height and width if you want, and then... Um, that's this iframe tag, so you want to make sure you select the entire whoops, entire uh, iframe thing, co copy it, and then again paste that into your wherever you're pasting these things. Normally, I'd probably use OneNote, keep it long term, but for this working example, I'll just use Notepad here, which is kind of the equivalent of text edit on a Mac, just a simple built-in editor. And that's it for creating the form. You can start closing up. Oh yeah, you can you can share it out to Google Plus and Facebook and Twitter too if you have those accounts. But just start closing everything up now. We'll talk about how you use it in a website or something like that. Now I know there's a million ways to do websites, just WordPress and Wix and Weebly and who knows what else. But for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and put in the code. For you to do it um, with one of those editors, you'll need to know how to insert links into your pages. Okay, so it really doesn't matter how you put the links in. I'm just going to use my everyday editor, which happens to be Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new HTML page, and let's call it Join1. I'll do two pages, all right? Um, so it'll actually be join1.html, okay? And then I'll put in the link, which is a href equal, and I'll put in target equal blank, and that'll make it open in a new page or tab. And then I put the text in, join our mailing list, 
Okay, and let's put this in a paragraph and center. It might as well make a little effort to make it look nice. Okay, text align and center. This is CSS code. Um, again, this has nothing to do with the form, though. I'm just kind of trying to make it look a little prettier. Okay, now I need that URL to the form, and I put that in Notepad before, so I'll just copy paste it out of there, and that goes in the href for the a tag, and I'll save that page. All right, then I'll do another page. We're going to call this one join to, and this one will illustrate the embed code. All right, so I'll create a blank page. Join to will be the file name. I don't have to put in the extension because Visual Studio puts that in, but it would be join to.html. Okay, and then the embed code goes right in the body here of the page, and I can just copy that out of there and paste it in. And um, really, uh, that's all I have to do. I don't have to do anything else. I could make it pretty, but just to get it to work, that's enough. And we'll open it up in a browser, take a look, and you can see that um, it looks just like the form, but it's on my page. It has a little scroll bar here. All right. Now, let's go publish these things real quick. And now this part is entirely up to you. However you normally get pages up to your site is fine. Or if you just work in WordPress or whatever and don't need to upload them, that's fine too. I'm just going to use FileZilla, which is an FTP client. And I'll just upload those two pages that I just created up to my own personal website. So I'll upload those. And then we'll be able to go take a look at those. Okay. So now you need to test everything. You, you don't want to just assume it works and stick it out there and have it out there for a year and realize it was never working. So all you have to do is browse out to your own page wherever you put that. Okay, so now I'm just going to browse out to my own site, the uh, join1.html page first. Okay, and when I do that, oops, got the dot. Okay, and I see my little link there. When I click that, it opens up my... Uh, join our mailing list form in a new tab, and I can just fill it in like any user would fill it in. Click Submit. All right, and then they can edit their response or just close that tab. Now we'll go look at the Join To page. That's the one that uses the embed code, and there's no link. Instead, there's actually a duplicate of the form itself, and again, they can just sign in same as before with an email address and a first name. This will be a totally fake one. Probably somebody does have that email address. Don't email them because I have no idea who that is. Okay, then click Submit and it's the same as before except for I didn't have to go to a new page. Okay, now let's go see where those data ended up. Recall that we told it to use Google Sheets so we need to go out there. So again, go back out to Google you can click apps and click sheets or just browse out to sheets.google.com. Okay, and that should get you to your sheets. And now this one, join our mailing list, is the one I just created. You see the date and time of each of my entries, that's automatic. And then uh, you see the username and first name for each of my entries. Now, as other people join the mailing list, that list will just grow and grow, and you'll always have a list of all the people who signed up. Now, you can click File and export those data anytime to Excel or Open Data Format or Comma Separated Values is a good one. You can actually import it into AWeber and probably some other um, email systems. Should you ever decide to go that route, you don't lose or have to retype all these. You can just pull them in right from this little spreadsheet. Okay, sound good? Makes sense? Hope it works for you. Thanks for watching. My name's Alan Simpson, and if you have any questions or anything, you can usually find me somewhere out on social media. If you browse to alansimpson.me and look around, you'll probably find me eventually. All right? Thanks again for watching.